Things might appear to be very calm and serene here on my property, but I have a big problem. And today, I plan on doing something about it. So follow along and I'll show you how I'm gonna combat Alaska State Bird. Alaska state bird is the mosquito and it's for good reason. There are mosquitoes out right now that my understanding is are the holdovers from last year and they're rather large coming in at about half an inch to three quarters of an inch in length. And while these mosquitoes are annoying, especially when you're trying to sleep at night and you have one in your cabin, they actually sound like a B-52 bomber coming in for a kill. Despite having a pillow or blankets shoved over your ears, you can still hear them. They're that loud. These ones really are not the problem though. These ones will soon die off and I will be met with the more aggressive, smaller mosquitoes that come in swarms. Right now, also the mosquitoes are not a big issue because it's cooler outside. It's kind of breezy and as long as there's a breeze, it keeps the mosquitoes at bay. It's really in the late evening hours or at night that the mosquitoes are coming out. But as I mentioned, as the days warm up and the winds die down, then those smaller mosquitoes will be the issue. So today I'm putting into place some preventative measures, which will hopefully keep the mosquito population relatively low in comparison to what it was last year here on my property. And I'm going to be putting several things into place that will help me and protect myself from those mosquitoes. But the first thing I want to say is don't do what I do. Now that isn't to say that everything I'm about to show you, you shouldn't do. But the one thing that I'm doing currently as I'm standing here talking to you is one thing that you shouldn't do. And that's wear dark colors. So it's my understanding that mosquitoes are attracted to darker colors. And therefore, if you want to keep the mosquitoes away, you should wear light colors. So that's the first thing. The next thing is, is that our first line of defense for mosquitoes, for most people, is to use a mosquito repellent. And there are some commercial brands out there that are pretty popular and they do work. But my issue with these brands is twofold. Here I have two commercially available mosquito repellents that you apply to the skin. The first one is the off-brand Deep Woods, and this does work. I'm not going to deny that, but it's chemical-based. Unless you want to put chemicals on your skin, um, which I don't, I stay away from this one, though, like I said, it does work. The other one is this Cutter brand, which is a lemon eucalyptus deterrent, and it does work as well, but it only lasts for about 20 minutes. So every 20 minutes you're having to reapply this. This one, if I'm gonna use a commercially made one, this one is the one that I prefer, even though I have to reapply it more often, reapply it more often that is, and that can become quite costly. Though I will tell you that I have some other options for mosquito repellent on the skin that I prefer better. So my first option for a mosquito repellent on the skin actually is this that I made years ago. All this is is witch hazel and essential oils. Essential oils of geranium, lemongrass, black pepper, eucalyptus, and things like that 
that have a smell that is repugnant to the mosquitoes. They don't want to come anywhere near those smells. And I've used this. This is a bottle that I made um, a couple of years ago. And I use this when I go fishing. I apply it to my skin and I don't have any issues. So this one I know works. And I'll post a recipe for this in the description of the video below. But I'm going to test this one in comparison to a recipe that came out of the 18th century. This was a recipe that George Washington used, Native Americans used, as well as trappers. And all it is is animal fat and rosemary essential oil. So back in George Washington's day, they would actually use bear fat. Now, I did try to acquire some bear fat. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get my hands on any. I should have actually purchased it um, a year ago when I saw it uh, available on Amazon. But all I have here, because uh, I'm just going to make a small batch of this, is about um, one and a half teaspoons of lard. And this is lard that I have previously rendered. And to that, I'm going to add about 10 drops of rosemary essential oil. And I'm just going to mix that all together. And then I'm going to apply this in two different ways. Well, not apply this in two different ways, but I'm going to apply this on one arm and I'm going to apply the lard and rosemary on the other. And we're going to see which one works better at repelling the mosquitoes. Now, the issue that I'm going to have here is that it's, like I said, cooler outside. The mosquitoes really are not coming around, but I do need to go outside and do some other things to reduce the mosquito population here on my property. So all I'm doing is shaking up the witch hazel and essential oils, and I'm just going to go ahead and mist that onto my arm, making sure that I get both sides of my arm. Now, you'll want to make sure that if you're doing this, that you do your own research and that you understand which essential oils are safe to use on the skin and which ones are not. Some essential oils um, can be volatile. Some essential oils can be hormone disruptors. And so you want to make sure that you are not using anything like that. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply just a little bit of this lard and rosemary oil, and I'm going to rub that right into my skin. One nice thing about doing this one is that lard, believe it or not, is a great skin conditioner. Um, so let's just go ahead and get that rubbed in. Now you'll want to use leaf lard if you're doing this. You don't want to use baking grease or anything like that. Um, because you don't want to smell <laughs> like um, bacon. I don't want to be attracting bears, which might be the reason why they used bear fat as opposed to uh, lard back in the day. But like I said, I couldn't get any. Um, so hence, I am armed. And um, that is something that I recommend if you're going to be in Alaska, is that you're armed. So we're going to do that. And then... <clears throat> I'm also going to apply this on my neckline um, just to keep the mosquitoes off of my neck and chest while I'm outside. Now that I've got my two natural mosquito repellent remedies applied to my skin, um, I have one other thing that I need to do to make sure that I'm protected from those mosquitoes, and that is to protect my face. So you notice I didn't apply any of the mosquito repellent to my face itself. And that's because I'm gonna take a straw hat that I've covered in some mosquito netting, and I'm gonna wear this before heading outside. And that way I can make sure that I don't have to apply any chemicals or anything to my face and I will be protected. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on and then I'm going to tuck this into my shirt collar and that way the mosquitoes can't get up and underneath it and get trapped within the netting itself. So putting this on though, I feel like I look like a cross between Jane from the Book of Tarzan and Lara Croft. So it's the modern emo version, if you will, of Jane. So with that being said, 
Let's head outside and I'll show you what else I've got going on. Again, I'm going to leave my arms exposed though. So if there are any mosquitoes out right now, I'm protected and we can see which one fares better. I will show you right now, I don't have any mosquito bites on my arms. Um, so we'll see if I get any by the time I'm done outside. I realize you probably cannot see my face while I'm wearing this mosquito netting. However, hopefully you can hear my voice. I do have an external mic on and hopefully the netting doesn't rub up against it too much. But let's talk about what are my plans to deter and eliminate the mosquitoes on the outside of my home. Well, we're all probably very familiar with using smoke as a deterrent. However, I have to tell you that the mosquitoes that I experienced here last year, they were not deterred in the slightest by a campfire. I would watch them fly right through the smoke as if it was nothing. They would actually almost dive bomb it and come out unscathed. And so while I'm lighting this fire, it's not to keep the mosquitoes away. It's actually just for my own entertainment. So while the mosquitoes were not deterred by the smoke or the flame last year, there were a couple other things that I used to help deter them so that I could sit out here and enjoy the fire. One of the most common ones is to use a citronella candle. And these work fine. Um, you know, you just light them and then they're gonna provide mosquito deterrent for a certain square footage. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this down here, let it do its thing. A couple of the other things that I used last year were these foggers. Now you can buy a big commercial type fogger that can spray a large area such as a field or a lawn, but these are just aerosols that I picked up at the local home improvement store. And don't shake them, you don't wanna give them a shake, but you're just simply gonna mist the area around you. But this will provide about 15 to 20 minutes worth of relaxation, if you will. After that, you're gonna to have to respray them because the aerosols will drop to the ground and then they'll become ineffective. So while these work for short periods of time, they're not really the best thing for deterring the mosquitoes in the long run. So what am I gonna do? Well, come this way and I'll show you. So here you can see I have a simple bucket and I'm gonna fill this bucket with about a gallon of water. Now to this gallon of water, I'm going to add one of these mosquito dunks. These mosquito dunks will kill off the larvae of the mosquito and prevent them from breeding, prevent them from becoming full grown mosquitoes so that they can breed. Now, when you're using these, you'll want to follow the instructions on here. You will want to wear gloves as I'm doing here. And you'll also want to make sure that you change your clothes and you wash up after using these because this is a pesticide. While it says that it's safe to use in bird baths, I do plan on putting some chicken wire or something over the top of these buckets just to prevent animals from drinking this water, even though it says it's safe to use. In fact, these could be used in a pond if you had a small enough pond to do so. While I'm surrounded by small ponds on my property, for a pond about the size of one acre, which is typical of the size of ponds around me, it would take almost 450 of these dunks in order to be effective in that amount of water. So do read the directions on these and make sure that you're using the appropriate size of um, dunk, if you will, for the amount of square footage of water that you're using. So we're talking about the surface area of the water, not the volume of the water. So you might be asking if it is the surface area of the water and not the overall volume of the water, why am I concerned about putting in a gallon of water in here and not just half inch or what have you? Well, I don't want this to evaporate so quickly. Now, if the dunks do dry out and they get rehydrated, they'll be just as, as, just as effective as they were the very first time you put them in there and they became hydrated. And you'll also want to keep in mind that mos mosquitoes breed in standing water. They don't breed in moving water. 
So that's one of the other reasons why I'm not concerned about the ponds that are around me because the ponds around me are actually spring fed and so that water is moving. But there is still the potential that they could be breeding along the banks of the ponds in the tall grasses or the weeds that might be growing up. But thank goodness there are dragonflies. The dragonflies will help to eat the mosquito larvae and help to reduce the population. Another thing is, is that there are bats in Alaska and so they will also help to keep the population down. So I'm gonna set these buckets out around the property in various places and I'm gonna go around the property and I'm gonna reduce some of the other standing water that isn't suitable to put one of these dunks in and also other hiding places that they might take up um, home in, such as like this right here. This is a remnant from last year and all it is is some basically kindling. And so I'll be collecting all of this and putting it into a metal trash can with a lid and that way the mosquitoes aren't getting in there where it has the potential to drop moisture from the ground and become a moist breeding ground or hiding place for them if you will. So look for places around your property that maybe you have some standing water and get rid of that. That'll be one of your best defenses against the mosquitoes. Now these things that I'm showing you so far are not the only tricks that I have up my sleeve. So after I enjoy this fire, I'm going to take you inside and I'm going to show you what else I'm doing to make sure that I don't get bit. Now I set the buckets out about every 50 feet or so around the front of the property, but I will be setting some additional buckets out down along the tree line um, and throughout the rest of the property. I want to do everything in my power to try to reduce the mosquito population here on the property as best as I am able. But I'm not trying to eliminate other wildlife on the property, which is why I'm only checking the game trail cameras about once a week. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the SD card from this camera and the one down by the pond trailhead and see what we captured over the last week. I do wanna thank John in Alaska for sending me these game trail cameras uh, because they have been a blessing to have on the property. And if you're curious about John in Alaska, uh, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description of this video. And one thing about John is he is a down to earth, what you see is what you get type of guy. And if you're interested in listening to some mountain man or cowboy poetry, then John is your man. So be sure to check out his channel. Oh, and also speaking about what happened last week with the footprints, well, they may have not been cryptid because they actually turned out to be a moose with dew claws. I didn't know moose had dew claws either. So if you're sitting there going, ah, yep, it's a thing. And here are some pictures of some others that looked quite similar to what I saw in my driveway. So just be aware that things aren't always as they appear. And if you're interested in knowing more about some cryptid type events, be sure to check out Buckeye Bigfoot because Nance has some wonderful tales about Bigfoot from around the nation that viewers have sent to her that she is more than happy to share with you. So be sure to check out Nance's channel if you get a chance. Now I've been out here for a couple of hours and I have yet to have any mosquitoes land on my arms. I did get one mosquito bite on my leg, so wearing tight clothing is also something that maybe should be avoided. But I need to put this fire out and I head back inside and show you what else I'm doing to prevent being bit by mosquitoes. But even though in last week's video, I showed how there's flooding in the area, in the last few weeks, I've shown you all the flooding here on my property. We are in an extreme fire danger here in this part of Alaska. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this fire out I'm gonna spread these remaining logs away from the fire. And then I'm gonna come back with some water and douse this really well before heading inside. Well, this netting over the bed is just one more way that I am protecting myself against the dreaded mosquitoes. Like I said before, that 
It doesn't matter if you're under the blankets or pillows, the mosquitoes know you're there and they will find a way to bite you. And while it means that Kenai can't get on the bed now because of this netting, it is a small sacrifice to make for the sanity of not waking up with a bunch of itchy bites all over your body. And speaking of itchy bites, I have to say that I did not receive any mosquito bites while I was outside earlier. Kenai, however, he did. He got some bites on his nose from the mosquitoes, but the, he doesn't seem to be bothered by them. So at least I know that the two methods that I described work. I'll leave recipes down below for you in the description. But I also want to say that there's a couple other things that I'm doing here to help protect me as well. And one of those is thanks to this racket that Linda had sent me not too long ago. And I have a couple others like this that I've used in the past here in the cabin. But all it is is a series of wires and it's got a little battery operated system in it that when an insect comes in between those wires and you press the button, they get zapped and then they're no more. So this works great for flies. It works great for mosquitoes. So thank you, Linda. This is something that um, I have found very useful already. Also, I'm using a blue light system that you plug it in and it's got a blue light. It attracts the insects. There's a little fan in the bottom of it. They get sucked down in that fan and trapped in a chamber down below. So no more mosquitoes. So at night, I plug that in, hoping that the mosquitoes will go to that and not to me. But uh, now they'll have no choice because they can't get to me. So speaking of getting stuff, let's go downstairs and I'll show you some of the things that people sent to me this week. And I also want to send you guys something. So stick with me and I'll let you know what that's all about. Well, as you can see, I have received a number of wonderful items this week from viewers. And one of those is very aptly timed, and that is this mosquito zapper. So thank you, Weed Eater. This will put to great use immediately. I really appreciate it. I also wanted to say thank you to Carol, who sent me this wonderful card and an Amazon gift card. I had actually missed this on a previous video um, because it had gotten slipped in with some of my personal mail. And so I apologize, but uh, thank you very much for both of those items. Greatly appreciated. And I also wanted to say thank you to my friend Diana who sent me some dog treats for Kenai, which I'm sure he'll love very much. She sent me a couple of jars of grape jelly and then she also sent me some scented soap. So very nice of her to do so. In addition, she sent a book of 100 years of Alaska poetry. And this is very, again, aptly timed because as I mentioned earlier, if you're into Alaska poetry, and you want to see someone who's just down to earth and as real as they can get, be sure to check out John in Alaska because he includes some poetry in his Friday night fireside chats. Very nice and very well done. Diana also sent me this lovely butterfly keychain. So thank you for that, Diana. I appreciate it. And then I also received two of these uh, large glass canisters. I have a couple others of these throughout the cabin. Oops, sorry about that. I have a couple others of these throughout the cabin and I absolutely love them. They're great for storing. So these came with no name attached. So whoever sent these, thank you very much for that. And then I wanted to say thank you to Teresa Lemire for sending in some bacon strips for Kenai, some more security door locks, and then this book titled A Country Year, um, living the questions. So thank you very much for this. I appreciate this. And I also wanted to say thank you to Beth Gruenwald for sending me this book on Alaska mushrooms, a wild, uh, wide ranging guide. As you know, I have a ton of mushrooms on my property and I'm very curious about all of them and which ones are edible and which ones are not. So thank you for sending this to me, Beth. And speaking of sending things to me and how I mentioned I wanted to send something to you, I would like to extend an invitation to each and every one of you to attend the first annual YouTuber Rondi over at Meadow Lakes, Alaska. That's being hosted by the Nomestead Home Off-Grid Alaska. And he and 
several other YouTubers will be getting together on Saturday, August 12th for this Rondi. There will be all sorts of things going on at the event. Um, there is a meet and greet. There is also going to be a wild mushroom forage and walk. There's going to be um, a rocket stove demonstration and Q&A. There's going to be some air rifles and black powder events going on and all sorts of other things will be happening that day. So be sure to check out Gnomestead's channel to find out more about that. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and curl up underneath that bug netting and see if I can get a good night's sleep without worrying about being bitten by a mosquito. Until next time, please stay safe and take care. Here's some outtakes to keep you entertained. And remember, at the end of that are some links to a couple of videos that you may not have seen yet. I appreciate you watching today and I'll see you on the next one. Time to start this all over again. And this chair is annoying because it rocks. I need to get my floors leveled. So while the mosquitoes were not afraid of the smoke, so what, see what I mean?